Hey there guys, Ian here. Today I'm bringing you another Cinema 4D tutorial and this one is about how to create kind of light streaks in After Effects in Cinema 4D. Uh, this is a technique that I used on the latest phase intro. Uh, a lot of people asked me how I did it so I thought that I'd do a tutorial. And now that I'm back at uni I have my big screen so everything's a bit easier to work on and I don't have to edit it a load afterwards. So let's just jump into Cinema 4D here and get started. So the whole point is that you kind of track lights and you can use that in After Effects using Particular. Um, a lot of people just from that will know how to do it, but I'll go through it step by step. So I'm actually going to insert a sphere here and this is going to be um, the object which it kind of spins around while the light streak goes around and while we're here we'll just quickly insert a camera and we'll just uh, down here in the position just make the X and Y zero and I'm gonna make the Z minus a thousand and I'm also gonna change the rotation to zero just so basically we're now face onto the image kinda zoomed out and the next step we want to do is actually insert an arc spline which is under the splines and arc and then you want to set the start angle to 90 and the end angle to minus 270. No, sorry, just a 270. And that way we get basically a half circle. And we can change the plane to XZ. And if we go out of our camera here, you can see that we have a kind of curve going around our, our sphere. So I'm going to change the radius to... 150 and that way we kind of get something a bit closer to the sphere we can decrease this all we want but for now I'm going to leave it at 150 and with that done we just got to make the arc editable go to our points mode which is over here and if we go into our top view here what we want to do is kind of zoom in at the end of the spline or start it doesn't really matter and go to mesh create tools and create point and just put a uh, just click right at the end and then we want to go to the other side and make another point right there as well then if we go to our live selection mode and zoom in again select the very end point and go to the other side holding shift and click on the other point um, we can actually just drag these out and that way we actually get um, a kind of path for it to follow. And I'm actually going to grab this point and just put it back a bit and with this point just grab it. And so it starts, the uh, streak will start here, go around and finish over here. And while we're here with the arc we want to change the intermediate points to uniform and that way when um, we go around this, it'll um, actually go around uniformly, so it'll be the same speed all the way around. Um, we can change that in the timeline later, but for now this is fine. And the last step is if we go back to our mo um, this mode here, which is a model mode, we want to just drag this back so it's quite close to our sphere. So with that done, we can go back to our main view look through our camera here and this is looking nice the next step is to insert a light right click on it go to cinema 4d tags and align to spline and just drag our arc in and now if we use this position value here we can actually move around our sphere so what we want to do is here we want the intensity to be zero so we can change that to zero and I'm going to make a keyframe using the control button and clicking on the circle and then after say 15, in fact I'm going to change the timeline to 5 seconds long, after yeah, 15 frames I want this to be on 100 and then it goes round and at about 90 I'm going to make another keyframe at 100 and at 110, change the key, um, 
mode to zero. So basically what this will do is go around, get brighter and then dim off. And with that done we want to go into our little align to spline tag. At zero we want to make a keyframe with the position at zero. And then at 110 we want it to be at 100%. And if we only have this highlighted, we now have both our keyframes for this position. If we highlight both of these and change the interpolation to linear, now it will go round. So it starts off with no brightness, goes around, lights up, and disappears again. Now this is all good, uh, but you can see it's kind of a bit too wide. So in the light here, we want to change the shadow to area. And then we want to change the detail, the fall off down here, to linear. And just decrease the radius a bit. And now you can see we get this much uh, kind of more subtle, almost, uh, look. And as it goes over, we kind of get this little dot. So maybe this is still a bit too much. So we can just decrease this till we get something we're happy with. So maybe something like this, just something really subtle. And we just throw on a basic kind of reflective material. So we just make a kind of darkish material here, turn on reflections and put a Fresnel material on. Kind of decrease the brightness here and here. Uh, so we get something like this, and then under specular, I'm just going to change it to a metal and kind of turn up the height. I'm not kind of giving away um, how to make materials as I'm not that great at them, but then we can just drag that onto our sphere. And now you can see it's a little too dark, so you can just play around with this. Maybe now we need to increase the size and maybe even the intensity of the light to maybe 150 here and here. Just so we get something really, really subtle. Um, but you can play around with this all you like. Sometimes it is a kind of um, task of trial and error until you get something which you like. So something like this will do, just so we get something really, really subtle. And with that done, um, I'm just going to change the light name to track so we know what we're working with. And with that done, we actually want to go into our render settings. I'm going to change the width to 1280 by 720 so we have a kind of 720p resolution and change it to all frames and just to speed it up a bit I'm going to change the frame rate to 24 and we need to change this in our timeline by pressing Control or command D and changing it here as well to 24 so everything will be nice and with that done we want to go to save click on this down this little arrow here and I'm going to save it to my desktop make a new folder within your folder called render or in fact no light and I'm going to call this no light you'll see why in a minute change alpha channel to on and the compositing file just tick all of these boxes and with that done we can just save the file to tutorial and we can just click render. So I'll come back when this is done. That's done now and we can play through and you can see we have this really subtle look. And the next thing we want to do is actually delete this light and this track. And we actually want to pretty much just light the scene as we would normally. Yeah, that's much better. And then we can just turn on some soft shadows just to speed up the render and with that done um, since the camera doesn't even move um, we actually can just save this as an image 
which is pretty good. So we can get rid of all of these and just save the current frame and place it here, just call it light and change it to a PNG. So now we have that and we can jump into After Effects. So just double click here and go to where you saved your tutorial go into the folder and you should have a file which is an AEC double click on that and then also import um, your, your picture as well so if we double click on the composition you can see we have um, a light going around and disappearing and if we drag our actual image on you can also see we have our image. So we'll turn the image off for now because we don't really need it. What we want to focus on is particular, so we need to make a new layer. So new uh, solid and a black solid will do. Go to particular in your uh, effects and drag it in. And then if we were to play through you can see we get some dots over here and if we change the emitter to 1000 we have some more then we want to go into the options here at the top and turn this to track as we named our light track and change the points to lights so now you can see we have um, this kind of trail em emitting from our um, light but we don't really want them kind of spreading around so we want the velocity to zero the randomness to zero, just zero all these out and then the emitter size to one so we get this kind of streak and we can change um, the particles per second to the light intensity and you can see we get this kind of look here so we can change now to the particles section change the life down to something like 1.2 and that way they kind of fade out a bit maybe even 1.1 just so it's a bit smaller change the particle type to streaklet uh, the feather to 0 the size to maybe 2 so we get a thinner line um, the size over life we can change to this ramp um, downwards so we actually get um, well, you can change it to any of these really maybe this one would be better but for now I'll just use this uh, gradient down so it gets smaller as it gets um, as the timeline goes on and we can also do the same with the opacity and under streaklet here we can change the number of streaks to 10 and maybe the size to 80. So we get these streaks here and we can change the color as well to something um, a little more reddish. And with that done um, we can even turn our little light off so we can see the streak. And the next step I want to do is add a little um, color to the front of it so I'm going to make a new black solid and change the mode here to add and then I'm just going to grab optical flares and drag it on and change the source type to track lights and the select type to all and you can see straight away that the light follows it and it actually uh, scales the light due to its intensity so we actually uh, have it fade off but this isn't quite the look we want so if we go in here and just clear everything and just grab a basic glow and shrink it down a bit and then go down and change the gamma to something a bit smaller and just play around with these until you get a kind of small dot which is still a bit too big so we can just scale it down here and I'm also going to change the colour to something more reddish so you can see here we have our um, streak with a little dot on the front which is looking pretty cool 
And the final step is to actually include this. So what we want to do is round about here. We want it to start appearing and as it goes over for it to appear more. And the best way to do this is just with a mask. So if we grab our mask tool here, we can just drag a square around if you have the right layer selected. Uh, you can just drag a square around the object and go back to our uh, little mouse. And what we want is to drag it so nothing's visible like here. And I'm just going to grab these two points, drag them just so it's a bit taller than our object as well because we're going to feather this in a minute and you don't want the edges to be feathered and make a under the mask make a keyframe on the path and as it goes over just kind of follow uh, the dot of the light so here and drag it over to here drag it over a bit more and over here until everything's visible so this is the basic look you kind of have this appearing but as you can see it's very sharp so we actually want to feather uh, the mask and change the expansion to negative and now when we play through we kind of get um, this kind of reveal look so you can see we play through and it appears and this is the basic look for what I made you probably want to play around a little bit more with uh, textures and lighting but in all this is the effect uh, very simple to do very easy to create and very effective it looks pretty cool um, the text is revealed the same way, just with um, a single line spline rather than a curve and kind of just position them around the scene. But yeah, just have fun with this and hope you learn something new.